Welcome everyone. We are so excited that you can join us today. My name is Megan. I am a retention project manager at Cuyahoga Community College and you probably see another box up there, Damian Thorkelson. He is our student success specialist um, at the Western Campus. Um, we just wanted to welcome you to this session. It is day three of success week. Day three is coming to an end. Um, and we are just so excited to learn a little bit more about the new American Sign Language program. I wanted to let any of our attendees know that you are muted upon entry, but you can feel free to raise your hand if you have a question, or you can use the chat feature on the screen to ask any questions or engage with other attendees. So, um, just as a little intro, the Associate of Arts degree with a concentration in American Sign Language is a part of our Liberal Arts Department. The Liberal Arts Department encompasses a number of different concentrations from Anthropology to Women's Studies. Most students who are planning to transfer to a four-year institution have a major of Associate of Arts. So, it's a very, very popular, popular program. The Dean of the Department is Felisa Eford. Now I would like to introduce Donna Liebenauer, Program Director for the American Sign Language Program. So Donna, I'll hand it over to you. Yes, of course. Just before I'm ready to get on, I spilled my drink all over the floor. <laughs> that is just like the name of the game though. Like this is real. This is working from home. This is <laughs> the safest deal. place to put my drink in. Well, like, I was in one session yesterday and like my cat's tail was like sitting out on that. It was just we we get it and it makes it yeah. a little more interesting. <laughs> oh, it's cherry, so <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway. Thank you. Welcome, um, everyone, for who's able to join us today. And I had to pop out to get a towel, so I missed a few of those that were specific you wanted me to start out with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all good, all good. I was just hoping that you could maybe um, set the stage for what we're talking about and maybe um, talk about the transition yeah, for sure. anyone who might be familiar with um, the Deaf and Studies program that we have. Yeah. Sure. Okay. That's why I thought we were starting, but I just wanted to confirm. I get it. <laughs> we're <just> recording this. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so, some of you, I don't know if anyone here um, is familiar with uh, our sign language interpreting program that we had um, and still currently have, but we're, we're um, bringing through our last cohort of students for that program, the Deaf Interpretive Services Program. So, um, I'll try to keep the story short, but long story short, um, there were some uh, changes, significant changes with program of study and meaning, you know, certain criteria, what you could or couldn't do with the program and how many credits, et cetera, what have you, and prerequisites, things like that. Um, so the college charged us with taking a good hard look at our current program with DIS. And um, Knowing the trends with what's happening in the field of interpreting, education as it relates to interpreting, et cetera, what our stakeholders out in the community are expecting of a program, uh, it became very crystal clear that it was not possible to move forward in the same capacity or in the capacity that within the uh, parameters of what program of study had to be. So um, we had a big meeting with our stakeholders uh, from the community, various agencies, what have you. And the final result of that as um, possibly a first phase or a permanent, you know, long term phase, we're not sure. It's kind of all new for all of us um, was to start with the ASL program. So this is kind of the foundation uh, for whether you want to become an interpreter someday. You could start with studying ASL at Tri-C. Um, you could certainly use that as a supplement to another program that you're pursuing, such as speech pathology. Um, sometimes there's certain core programs that require sign language as part of the curriculum. Um, so we have also looked into other programs at other colleges that uh, do require that. And so those, those could transfer over into those programs when you go on for a bachelor's degree, whether it be University of Akron or Cleveland State or possibly Kent State for interpreting. So, <laughs> um, so that's kind of 
a brief history of the transition and how we ended up coming to having an ASL uh, degree program, although it has been something we had talked about in the past, but um, we kind of got a real big push to do it real quickly. And so this is where we're at. So we are graduating out our last interpreting program of our cohort of students for the interpreting. And also in conjunction with that, we'll be implementing our new ASL program starting in the fall. So um, I know Megan put a link in the in the comments for that uh, to go to the website where you can see all the curriculum and et cetera. Um, and as we you know grow and change and as our program continues, certainly that will be a place where we'll continue to put updates about the program and, and any changes for that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So um, what makes Tri-C's program unique? Um, if students are kind of comparing different colleges to go to, um, why would a student want to choose Cuyahoga Community College for our program? Well, there's a, a couple of reasons. One, um, well, we do have deaf faculty, which is great um, to learn sign language with deaf faculty. Um, but also, uh, just as a, a strong foundation, because we are going to be so um, concentrated on learning just the language, which is obviously a huge piece if you are wanting to go on to become an interpreter. Um, so we're the only program um, in this area um, that has a concentration in American Sign Language, specifically um, at the you know, AA degree level. And so um, it's a great foundation for if you are going on to, like I had mentioned earlier about another program, if you know that you, you have potential to interact with deaf clients in your, in your um, profession, this is a great start for getting that foundation um, as well as for interpreting because especially for interpreting, it's super important that you get that strong foundation of the language and this would be a great place to start that. Thank you. Um, so I know you kind of mentioned it, but I didn't know if you could um, dive in a little bit deeper, um, maybe why students choose these institutions, but what colleges, uh, you mentioned students often transfer. So what colleges do Tri-C students who are looking to concentrate in American Sign Language typically transfer to? Yeah, so um, it is still new, so we are still exploring those opportunities, but there are um, three specific programs that we've identified. Um, one of them being Cleveland State and University of Akron, um, who have speech pathology programs. And we, there's, if you look at our curriculum, there's not really um, a huge difference in the curriculum, but there are certain courses that you can select over other courses that would gear you in a certain direction. So if you're going into speech pathology, part of the curriculum could be taking the speech pathology course at uh, Tri-C, um, and that would transfer into those other programs. And then also with your sign language, those could transfer into the other programs as well. And then certainly um, with Kent State, ha having the interpreting degree, um, getting your foundation with your ASL here um, at Tri-C, and then going on for a bachelor's in uh, American Sign Language for interpreting. Um, so those are the three specific programs that we've identified. And as we go along, we're, we're still in conversation about other programs that we can possibly collaborate with or align with. Um, so there may be, you know, some tweaks and changes as we go, or just, you know, letting students know about those opportunities. Um, so, but like I said, those are the three, Akron, Cleveland State, and Kent State. Perfect, perfect. And just to plug, we do have a transfer center here at the um, at all of our campuses, actually. So we always encourage students who are even like considering transfer down the line. Um, you can make a transfer appointment, whether you're a CCP student, whether you're in your first semester or whether you're pretty ready to transfer. So they'll help you through that entire process. And they know about scholarships, too, which is always yeah. good. <laughs> So my next question is what types of jobs or like what else can you get into in the future with a start um, at Tri-C's or at Tri-C with this program? Yeah, so it kind of depends. Some, some of that uh, answer to that question will depend on how much you really full force put into the program. Um, if you're just, you know, kind of interested in it as a, as a supplement to another type of career. Um, you know, it obviously, <clears throat> speech pathology or something would be your career, and this would just be an enhancement to that, being able to communicate directly with your clients. 
Um, but if you are looking to go into interpreting or a field related to sign language, um, which I can kind of segue on that in just a sec, um, but um, you know, you'd really want to put, you know, 100% of yourself into the program, getting out there in the community. We, we certainly present students with those opportunities to be able to um, get out in the deaf community, um, practice your skill, as well as, you know, putting 100% into your course, courses as well. Um, because it, the feedback we got from our stakeholders when we had our meeting with them is that if your skills are good enough, they will consider you for sign language interpreting work. Um, without necessarily having a specific degree in interpreting. Now, that's not to say I'm encouraging that you don't go on for further study in interpreting. I just that, want to put that disclaimer in there. Um, but if you, especially if you're coming into it with a little bit of background already and you're um, really building your skill and you're at a level where um, you've really put 150% into it and you're really strong with your skill, um, you could certainly connect to those agencies and look into potential work. I do have, some of them do have mentorship programs um, to help also move you along in your skill development. Um, so there are opportunities possibly there. Um, but again, that's your long-term goal would be to get, you know, get some sort of official training in interpreting because there's still a lot about interpreting that obviously we're not going to cover in the ASL program. We are going to touch on it a little bit um, and get you some a little bit of the foundation of it and an understanding of what that means. Um, but certainly we're not a preparation. We're no longer a preparation for interpreting. So um, other types of jobs. Um, there's not necessarily specific jobs in ASL. Usually it's a supplement to another career, but uh, some people who have gotten into things like um, vocational rehabilitation, um, they're, they're often dealing with clients who are deaf. Um, so having that skill of sign language to be able to communicate with them directly. Um, some people have gone into you know job coaching type jobs, um, and they obviously uh, sometimes are training clients who are deaf starting a new job. And so having that um, language skill would definitely enhance that. Very cool. Thank you. Um, this is a question that I get a lot, actually. Um, does ASL count as a foreign language credit for transfer? Yeah, and we are also covered, um, or we have a, I'm going to completely blank out on <laughs> the, the, the transfer. The yeah, I knew you'd be able to jump in there. Um, the transfer insurance. Yeah, with levels one through four, we are approved that if you take a course with us, you can transfer it within the state of Ohio um, and get credit for those those courses because we are all, all aligned with the uh, the curriculum of all the other colleges in the state of Ohio now, the state institutions anyway, um, is my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Um, and yeah, so um, there is that opportunity to use it as a foreign language as well as um, just knowing that it can transfer out into other Ohio schools as well. That's really nice. And really I just nice. want to also add too about uh, when you asked earlier about the uh, jobs and whatnot. Um, there's also um, some uh, group homes in the area, especially if you get into areas of mental health or something like that, um, <clears throat> where there are group homes where People are uh, transitioning out into the community and they are they actually have a deaf group home in, in Ohio um, where some of our students have gone and, and worked and um, and they use sign language at the home. So um, there are some like little niche, interesting niches around that um, where they use ASL as a primary part of the job. So oh wow. Yeah. I did not know that, so that's really interesting. Glad I asked. <laughs> um so I don't know how many of the attendees in our session are um, that could potentially still be in high school looking for a college. Um, many of the students in the session might be current students, but uh, can college credit plus students take ASL classes at Tri-C? And for anyone on the session who doesn't know what a college credit plus student is, that is a student who is currently in high school and taking classes at Tri-C for college credit. But they also count towards their high school diploma requirements. So good things all around. Yeah, thanks for explaining that. You could do it much better than I could. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's the interesting thing about uh, the program now is previously with the Deaf Interpretive Services program, uh, you had to be a high school graduate in order to take the interpreting program. Although you could still take, you know, the Gen Ed's and some of the sign language courses, but 
Um, this, this program does not have a designation about being a high school graduate, so students certainly could be eligible as a high school student to begin our program and possibly, you know, depending on where they're at in high school, um, you know, get a good way through that program before they even graduate high school. So oh, that's really cool. I, I've also heard kind of relating to my last question uh, about whether or not ASL classes count as a foreign language. They do count. Um, at a lot of schools towards their high school requirement of a foreign language. Yeah, and there are more and more high schools offering sign language as well. And so, um, yeah, I mean, if you can get college credit for it, why not? <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, and and that's great, too, because if you are, uh, again, you know, I'm, I know interpreting is my background and where we've been all these, you know, for over a decade now with our program, but if you are considering interpreting, um, you know, getting into that early start in the sign language will really set the foundation for you. So when you are going on for further education towards interpreting, for, you know, as an example, um, you've got that foundation and you can, you know, pretty much start off pretty quickly into an interpreting program, provided you can meet the, you know, the skill level that they're expecting in that particular program. So. so. This is, this is one of my favorite questions because I really want to know the answer to this. <laughs> Deaf interpreting has gotten national recognition with the popularity of Marla Berkowitz, the Deaf interpreter in Governor DeWine's daily press conferences. Can you talk a little bit about her role specifically and maybe some of the steps she took to get to where she is now? Because now she's famous, so. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's been really interesting exposure that a lot of deaf interpreters are getting um, all across the country, really. There's uh, one in Maryland. Uh, I can't remember all the different states now, but I know the faces. I just can't remember the states they're in. Um, but um, just a, a quick explanation of the difference between a sign language interpreter and deaf interpreter is that for sign language interpreters, those are identified as individuals who can hear and are interpreting as their profession. Um, whereas a deaf interpreter is actually deaf, and they are also an interpreter, um, but um, because you have to be able to hear the source language, such as Governor DeWine, um, they, they work in, in tandem with a hearing a sign language interpreter. So when you're seeing Marla and the governor on screen, and I, can't, I don't know the other interpreter's name who does the Q&As with her, um, but uh, there's a hearing interpreter off screen who is interpreting everything that DeWine is saying, and then Marla is taking the, the interpretation of that and making it even more universal for the deaf community because there is such a range. Um, and I'll, I won't go off into the whole history of why that is, but, <laughs> but, um, but there's a whole range of different communication levels um, of sign language. Um, so the use of having the deaf interpreter, since it is their actual native language and they've lived it, they've been in the culture, they can really take the language and just make it even more visual, more accessible to the wider range of the deaf community. So that's the reason for bringing in the deaf, deaf um, interpreters for those. And um, there is a specific training that they do go through and there are not enough of them, that's for sure. Um, but you are starting to see a trend with um, trying to bring them more and more into the interpreting field because why not? They should be. <laughs> it's their language. Um, so um, I'm glad to see such, you know, that other states are, you know, getting on board with using deaf interpreters. You know, um, so uh, did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> right. Complicated, but hopefully you're getting the visual. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I like, it's so funny because I'll like be on, I don't know, Facebook or any mm -hmm. social media, and I see articles about Marla Berkowitz all the time now, and it's mm -hmm. just, it's does such an amazing thing to raise awareness. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of people realize just you know if they catch a glimpse of it that they have probably have no idea that she's actually deaf and and that she's a deaf interpreter so uh, it's interesting to learn that and to understand the, you know how that works behind the scenes so absolutely yeah, yeah. Absolutely. um so um we have several people as attendees here in this room um this room this virtual room <laughs> i just want to remind everyone that if you have any questions please definitely um add them into the chat as we're going um 
I would be while you're looking to I wanted to mention that I don't know if students have noticed or not, but um, we have made some changes because we had to make you know some curriculum changes. We didn't want to lose um, and we aren't able to have that six level of ASL. We didn't want students to lose the opportunity to really be able to study the language uh, at the level that we would like them to be when they graduate. So we did expand our lab time within our classes. So the credits are the same, but they have additional course time um, every week um, within each course level of ASL. So, um, so that's been a, a benefit that we've been able to incorporate that extra time for students to um, you know, study the language and do whatever activities the you know, instructor is going to have them do. Um, so we've been, and then we've also pulled some of our uh, content from, um, which course did we get rid of? <laughs> we pulled some of our content um, from other another course and, and distributed it among our other courses. So there's been some content changes. Um, you know, if anyone is coming back and retaking a course, they might notice some differences with that. Um, but uh, so we're happy to, to be able to still allow that time for students to really study and, and dissect the language. Yeah, well, good. I am so that's really good to know. So I actually do have a couple questions in um, in the chat over here on the okay. side. So um, the first question I had was, and I, I answered it, I think, because this this WebEx is for everyone. Uh, but the first question was, I'm taking ASL um, 1020 starting in um, June. Is this WebEx right for me? Um, so I, I it, they said ASL 2. I'm taking ASL 2 beginning in uh -huh. June. Is this the right WebEx for me? So one of those students is on um, this session learning a little bit more about um, about the program. And then the second session, the second question I uh, would need you to answer. So I would like to take more ASL classes, but I'm working full time. So coming to campus is difficult. So right now having the online classes is pretty great. Yeah. Do you plan to offer ASL classes online after COVID-19? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That is a really good question. Yeah. We have had an interesting phenomenon happen over the summer with um, our ASL courses, with uh, them transitioning to online. You know, I think in general, most ASL interpreting programs have kept things in the classroom um, for the most part, just in terms, especially the beginning courses, just because um, it is such a visual 3D language, and when you bring it online, it becomes 2D, and there's some, you know, there's some nuances that are a little different when you're learning um, in a 2D environment. Um, so, um, but over the summer when we transitioned online, um, we've actually had to add some ASL courses. We had people jumping out of the woodwork. They must have been sitting there waiting <laughs> for an online ASL class. So um, that is something that we'll look at. I don't know, and I don't know what's going to happen with the college in terms of what they're going to officially announce for fall. Um, I, I know there's, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, um, going to. I mean, I kind of have some insight, but I don't know what the final end will end up being. But go ahead. Um, so I just wanted everyone to know that there is a student town hall on Friday at 1.30, and you should have gotten an email about it. Um, and one of the bullet points on the email said discussion about fall semester. So like even faculty and staff, we we don't know what's going to happen yet this fall. So I'm going to be tuning into the student town hall to see um, we have a faculty and staff one after that. But I think yeah. I think they might announce some plans on Friday. So definitely tune yeah. into that. Um, check your emails. But um, I don't anticipate that we will be fully on ground. I can tell you that. So, yeah, I, I don't think so either. We've definitely been moving forward in preparation that we would have to be online just because we didn't know what was going to happen, what the trends would be with the coronavirus, et cetera. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, so I think they've been trying to wait as long as possible to really make that final decision. So we're kind of, you know, simultaneously trying to plan for either or. Um, but yeah, so we'll find out, I guess, more information tomorrow for the official. But, you know, everything's subject to change. But in terms of, when we are finally back on ground um, on campus, um, 
I don't know. Uh, that's something that we're definitely going to be taking a hard look at. Um, you know, how much more online we want to be. We'll have to really talk with the faculty about how successful they feel it was. Um, attendance can become an issue with when it, when it becomes online. Um, I think it's easier for students to be like, ah, not today. <laughs> you know, um, the weather's nice, whatever the reason. But um, yeah, so um, that is something we'll be looking at. And I don't, I don't know. I guess really is the bottom line. Um, oh, I get that. Well, yeah. that kind of leads us to our next question. You kind of answered it, but um, one of the students here in the session said that um, they took ASL one, and I think that was probably like right in the time frame of started out in person, switched mm -hmm. online, and we were all kind of um, yeah, we we're all kind of figured it all out. <laughs> um, so now that we've had some time to kind of adjust, and we're I don't want to say we're used to online learning, but we have more um, processes in place to make it mm -hmm. more seamless. Um, so are the ASL classes right now that are happening this summer, ASL 1, ASL 2, would you say that they're pretty, um, they're, they're pretty streamlined to be online now? Um, uh, yes, you know, no. um, as far as meeting in class, like in a class meeting time, yeah, there's other aspects of the, the language study and the activities that are required and the recordings and various things like that and partner work and you know there's little nuances that um we're still you know looking into um, online um, like recording platforms and things like that um and uh so that part of it the, that part of it you know is still you know we're still learning the technology we're still figuring out what's the best way to use um i think we're coming close to making those decisions but um but and i'm sure there'll be things that we'll be learning about and possibly in integrating that will you know support the online learning environment um it's possible we might look at something more like a hybrid where you you know partially meet in class and then some online um, so that we're not fully dependent on the online environment and are still getting that 3D experience with the language. Oh, so um, you would still potentially all meet, say, in yeah, that. Maybe once a week or, you know, I don't know. That's, that's also something we could be looking at as a possibility. Um, but also keep in mind, too, that you still have your gen eds you need to take, and all of those can be taken, to my knowledge, probably most of them can be taken online. Um, as far as English, yeah, yeah. everything can be taken. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Everything is online. Everything um, with a few little exceptions, but um, for those who are just starting out with taking classes down the road, you might, and we, and if we are on, on campus again at some point, um, you know, you may not have the ASL courses online, but you'll still have the opportunity to take those um, Gen Ed courses and other curriculum requirements online. Okay, that's really good to know. Yeah, I know that's <laughs> such a good question. Um, yeah, yeah, and you know the feedback we've received, and we just received it in the the chat here is as a full time working mom, switching mid session yeah. was not conducive. Um, it just it just isn't. Yeah. Um, well, we do. Hopefully, we'll have a little more flexibility. I don't know. Um, you know, again, it's going to be a lot of the faculty feedback and what they feel how successful students are are doing how they are with the online platform with specifically to ASL um, we have to come together and kind of talk about our experience and how that's all working for everybody um, yeah. what the trends are in terms of how many people are dropping out and how many are really you know sticking to it so those are all things that we'll have to investigate and kind of make that decision which will you know, take a little bit of time um, but I was heading somewhere with that thought and it just escaped me um, well, while you're thinking of it, I think I need to clarify yeah. something that I said. Uh, so I, so as of right now, for the summer, just to just to be clear, um, all of our summer sessions, all of our summer classes are online. There are a few exceptions. You would definitely, definitely know if you were in one of those classes. Um, some of our police coursework, some some more hands-on training. For the fall, no announcement has been made yet. However, there is a town hall this Friday that you can attend at 1.30. You should have gotten an email about it uh, where they, I anticipate we will get more information about fall. 
But I would say do not plan on having the bulk of your classes be in person. I just don't think that's going to happen. So I hope that that makes a little bit of sense. I see we have someone who's going to be graduating this December um, who, uh, you know, unfortunately, as much as I like want to be able to say like, yes, we are going to see you on campus this fall and we will get to congratulate you with a big old hug. Um, we might just have to wait a little bit longer for that. So um, I, we will still have a commencement um, celebration. So that part will be exciting, um, but we miss you. I just want everyone in here to know that we, we miss you. And the reason we're doing these virtual sessions is so that we can engage with you virtually because we want you to know we still care. And yeah, very weird. Yeah, weird. yeah, we feel just very as good um, having a campus. Um, <laughs> yeah, we feel just as confused and thrown out of the loop as yeah. our students do. So I know I sometimes I I still get phone calls to my office and I get like a voicemail come to my email and I'm like, I want to call you back. I like, on my cell phone, but it's just yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Well, I was going to say that with the interpreting program, it was a little um, different with our accreditation and with other, you know, aspects of the um, of the education of, you know, becoming an interpreter. We were less definitely less flexible and being able to offer online. Um, and um, so, yeah, um, we'll see what, you know, as things move along, like I said, we'll have to do some investigating and checking on enrollments and the impact of the online and how that works and, and talk with faculty before we make some final decisions on that, but. Sure. So yeah. I do have one more question it looks like, and I might get more, but the last one that I have here is, um, will the program only be offered at the Western campus? And that's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that myself. Is it offered at all four campuses or just one? Yeah, I'm glad they asked that because I am so used to focusing on Western campus, but I'm forgetting oh. to know that it actually will be a, considered a college wide program. Uh, with the interpreting, it was specifically at West, and the courses for the actual DIS courses were only at West. But being that every campus has offered um, at least levels one and two ASL um, that we will continue to expand our offerings at the other uh, campuses and that's something that all the coordinators of the other campuses and myself will have to get together and start taking a look at how we're going to kind of um, balance that out in terms of offerings and so it's going to be a little bit of a test to see which campuses are more successful and with enrollment with different levels of ASL um, uh, and different, um, you know, whether it's deaf culture or the, you know, the five levels of ASL. So, um, so you might see some classes pop up at a campus and then maybe not again because the enrollment wasn't good or maybe we'll have to add courses because it's doing amazing. So it's just kind of going to be a little bit of a testing the waters with that. Um, so. Yeah, but eventually we will be expanding our ASL courses at other campuses. Awesome. And right now, right now, just to clarify, you can take them anywhere. <laughs> yeah, right now you take them anywhere. But just to clarify, yeah, the other campuses do offer levels one and two. They have been for a long time. So at the very least, you can you know get those at other campuses um, okay. whenever we are on ground. <laughs> right. 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 Awesome. Yeah. So. Um, I, I kind of can answer this, I think, but my final question was, what would a student want or need to do in order to get started in the program? Um, and I'm assuming they would need to meet with a counselor to pick out the classes. The first thing I was going to say, I would first strongly suggest you meet with a counselor. Um, if, you know, whether you're new or whether you've taken other courses, especially if you're transitioning from another program, you know, taking a look at all the courses you've taken or if you've taken none, I would still sit with a counselor get some advice on, you know, what, how to get started and what to do. That's always my first recommendation. Um, and then if you have specific questions about the courses, I can certainly assist you with that. It's, it's, it's going to be new for me too, because with our DIS program, it was very regimented. It was this, you take this in this semester, you take this in that semester. Um, and it's still that way because you're building your ASL. You take level one before you take two and three and four, um, et cetera. Um, but there might be some ways that I could also assist in guiding you um, with that. But I would definitely start with counseling first. Um, I I don't know. Um, 
I assume any campus can help you. I do know that our Western campus counselors have been more, you know, integrated into the transition. Um, but I'm sure that any counselor can help you. And if you have any, you know, questions beyond that, you can certainly reach out. Or and they reach out too. They're usually pretty good about reaching out to me with specific questions as well. So well, very cool, very cool. Thank you. Yeah. So last but not least, how can someone contact you if they have any questions? Yeah, I don't know. Are you able to put my email in the chat? Yes, I can. Email is probably best at this point. <laughs> um, you can certainly leave a message on my extension, and we do get those messages, as Megan mentioned, come to our email. Um, so it's the best way for you to get a hold of me. Um, but it is um, email is probably better at this point. I got it. I put it in the chat. So yeah, so my name's not that easy to spell. <laughs> I learned that when I accidentally spelled it wrong when I tried to send you the invitation the first time, oh, right, which is right. why you didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, we do, uh, usually we start out, obviously, if you have specific, um, if you have more questions about the program, we can send you, we have a template of an email we've been sending to students, we can certainly send that out to you. It might provide some further information maybe that we forgot to cover or um, or at least, at least it just gets us connected um, so that we have a way to, to reach out to you if there's other things, announcements or things like that. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much to all of our attendees for joining us for this session. Um, we have two more days left of um, Success Week, but we are recording all of our sessions so you can tune into all the ones that took place earlier this week. Uh, but I just want to say thank you so much to Donna for joining us and uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Thank yes, you. thanks everybody. <laughs> thanks, Megan. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.